We walk again after the floods that have threatened the visit. And certainly the rains had brought the airport grass up, five inches in two days, requiring a last-minute adjustment. The prince and princess were casually dressed for what was, by Australian standards, a very casual welcome. No bands, no guard of honor, just a few local officials. All of whom were privately more interested in the first appearance overseas of Prince William, who was carried firmly down the steps by Nanny Barnes. When she handed him over to the princess, there followed an impromptu photo call with everyone beaming at everyone else. For the baby, it was a very gentle introduction to the life of royal tours, as so it should be at nine months. But it was his father who drew attention to what is normally never mentioned here, the plague of Alice buzzing round the princely forehead. <laughs> Prince William gazed with some disbelief at the soil of Australia beneath him. But because of possible health hazards in the wake of the floods, he was only allowed five minutes in the outback, which seemed to suit him. He didn't like the glare. There was a discreet farewell from father. Just a pat. And then from mother, a peck on the cheek. Then it was back to Nanny Barnes and another three hours flying to the farm in New South Wales, which will be his home for the next six weeks. The outback road into town was pretty empty. At the rather daunting motel where the couple are staying, the prince found himself slightly bemused by his surroundings. Anthony Carthew, ITN, in Alice Springs.